Hi, my name is Madi Zoravand from the Hyperlyceum website. In today's lesson, we want to find out what mass scaling is and how it can be used in abacus modeling and help us in our simulations. First, we need to address the reasons for the necessity of using mass scaling and the conditions for employing this technique. Processes with a dynamic nature, but with a loading rate and process speed that allow them to be considered static, are called quasi-static processes. In quasi-static processes like deep drawing, forging, and rolling, we should use dynamic implicit and static general steps. Considering that significant deformations occur in these processes, and it may require a lot of solution time for the model to complete and converge, we can use the dynamic explicit step instead of the dynamic implicit step. But before that, let's discuss the possible scenarios we may encounter while using the Abacus Standard Solver with static general and dynamic implicit steps in our simulations. The first is that our problem can be solved with a reasonable time increment, which is our number one case, that we can use the dynamic implicit and static general steps. But we may face other situations. The second case is that our problem can be solved after a very long time and we need a lot of increments, very short time increments, and a high calculation cost. The third case is so that our problem will not be solved completely and the job we submitted will abort and we will face errors such as too many attempts or excessive element distortion. In these two cases, our solution is to use the explicit solver which means we should use the dynamic explicit step. When using the explicit solver, we have to consider the situation of our problem in such a way that the assumptions of quasi-static simulation will be fulfilled for us. However, the solution of dynamic explicit may have a lot of time and time-consuming costs. In such situations, we use a technique called mass scaling. In this step, I want to explain to you what mass scaling formulation is, and then we will use it in the Abacus software, and we will apply it and investigate its effects on our simulation. As I explained before, we have a parameter called minimum time increment, which is indicated as delta t. Our time increment is equal to L, which is the specific length of our element divided by C, which is the wave speed in our material. In the same way that it can be determined, L returns to our meshing and the mesh size. Considering L as a constant, the only factor that affects our minimum time increment is C, which is the wave speed in our material. C is equal to the square root of the ratio of the elastic modulus of the material to the density of the material. As we explained, we want to use the mass scaling technique in quasi-static simulations. As we are using an explicit solver that uses the mass matrix in its formulation, as a result, the material's density is important to us in this solver. But considering that our simulation is quasi-static, we can change the density value and multiply it by a coefficient. However, at the end of the simulation, we should pay attention to and examine whether this coefficient applied to the material's density has affected the results of the process and caused any disruptions. So, our goal is to increase the time increment by using mass scaling. As a result, we can solve the problem faster and the calculation cost is less. Assuming the length of the element remains constant, if we reduce the value of C, we can increase the value of delta T. To decrease C, we can consider a virtual density obtained by multiplying the density by a factor, known as the scale factor, which is f, raised to the power of 2. In Abacus software, I will show you where this is set, and we will become familiar with it. By substituting this virtual density into the formula related to c, we obtain a c prime. Then, by inserting this into the formula for the minimum time increment, we can increase this variable. This process, known as mass scaling, allows us to reduce the analysis time, simulation time, and computational cost of our simulations in Abacus. Next, I will discuss how to apply these settings and their details in Abacus, as well as examine the impacts of using this technique on solving time and simulation results. Stay with me. In the Abacus software, I would like to explain the benefits of mass scaling for you and how to implement the related settings. First of all, this model that you see in Abacus is a model of a deep drawing process simulation, which I explained in the tutorial video for restart analysis in Abacus. I explain the features of this model and here, we use this model and we will investigate the results of this model together. And also, I will explain how to implement the settings on this model for you. After modeling this process, to implement mass scaling, 
we go to the step tab. As you can see, I have two models here, which are completely similar, and I just use the mass scaling technique in my second model. In the step manager, as you see, and as I explained in the previous videos, we have two steps here. The first step involves applying a load through the blank holder onto the sheet, and the second step controls the punch movement, which moves downward to form the working sheet and complete the deep drawing process. Both steps are dynamic explicit steps, and now we want to investigate the steps and effects of the applied mass scaling technique. As I explained to you in the step manager, in the step that we want to implement the mass scaling settings for it, we edit that step and go to the mass scaling tab. As you see here, I implemented the mass scaling for this step, and now we want to analyze the mass scaling options for these two steps. Well, in the default state, when you come to the Mass Scaling tab, there is an activated option named Use Scaled Mass and throughout step definitions from the previous step on the top. And when we want to activate the Mass Scaling, we activate the Use Scaling Definitions Below option and click on Create. And when you click on Create, the same window opens for you, which I opened here. When this Edit Mass Scaling window opens for us, we have different parts here, and in each part, we have different options, which I will explain to you in detail. Generally, we have many applications where, in the mass scaling environment under the Objective tab, a semi-automatic mass scaling option is available, and most of our use cases are limited to this option. When using the semi-automatic mass scaling option in the Objective tab, there is an application part setting called Region. Here, you can select the part of the model to scale. To scale the entire model, choose Whole Model, to scale only a specific part, choose a set and select the previously defined set. Here, I created a set from this sheet named blank, set the region option to set and selected the blank I wanted to scale. The next setting is the scale setting, which provides two options at the beginning of step and throughout step. At beginning of step, activates the scaling at the start of the step, while throughout step, keeps the scaling active according to your specified settings throughout the entire step. In the type part, we have two options which you can use from any of them. The first option is scale by factor. If you recall from the PowerPoint section, where we reviewed the scaling formula to define virtual density, row prime, let me explain that row prime is equal to F to the power of two multiplied by row, where F to the power of two is the scale factor. This means that when I set the scale factor to 81, F is considered to be 9 in the equation. The important point is that when you choose a larger scale factor, the minimum time increment will be larger, and the simulation and your job will be done and completed faster. Keep in mind that these processes are considered quasi-static, so the scale factor should not exceed a certain limit, as this could cause the process and simulation to deviate from quasi-static conditions. Later, we will learn how to check if our simulation remains quasi-static. In general, it is suggested that the scale factor should not exceed 50. I'll provide an example to illustrate the difference between this model and one without mass scaling, so we can work through this problem together. Another option available here is Scale to Target Time Increment. This uses the same mass scaling formula I previously explained, where delta T equals L divided by C. In the previous method, we defined C as a function of the material's density, but in this case, we will directly define delta T, the time increment. We typically set this time increment to a value around 5 times 10 to the power of negative 4, which is generally considered reasonable. When selecting scale to target time increment of in the type section, a subsection named scale element mass appears, providing three options. The first option is uniformly to satisfy target. This means that using the same formula, I previously explained delta T equals L divided by C. Abacus calculates delta T for the smallest element, then multiplies it by a factor to reach the specified target increment value and applies this adjusted value uniformly to all other elements. The second option is if below minimum target. This option just multiplies the time increments of the elements that are below the specified amount. The third option is non-uniformly to equal target. In this option, all elements are considered separately, 
and their time increments are multiplied by a specific value to reach a designated and allocated amount set by us. The Frequency section becomes active when we choose the Throughout Step option. In the Frequency section, we have two options for scaling. The first option is Every In Increments, which means that the mass scaling formula we explained earlier is applied every 10 increments. If we select the second option, Scale at N Equal Intervals, the simulation estimates, for example, that it will complete in 100 increments. By entering the number 10, the total 100 increments are divided into 10 equal intervals, applying mass scaling at each interval. These were the settings for semi-automatic mass scaling, which we use frequently. The second section is automatic mass scaling, which has settings similar to the previous section, but is specifically related to the rolling process. In rolling processes, where elements are elongated, significant changes in element mass can greatly affect results and may be undesirable. So according to its importance, this section is separated from the previous one. We analyze the application and the frequency parts in the semi-automatic mass scaling section, and here we focus on the type section. In the type section related to the rolling process, we have three options. The feed rate refers to the speed of the rolling process. The extruded element length is the secondary length of our elements after the process and deformation. The nodes and cross section refer to the nodes in our desired cross section, which we can specify in this section. The next section is frequency, which we investigated lately. The next step is reinitialize Massachusetts. Suppose we have two steps. In the first step, you apply mass scaling, and in the second step, you want to reset the mass scaling settings to the default values. You can use this option here to reinitialize mass scaling for either the whole model or, if preferred, a specific part of your model which is defined by created sets. The last option is Disable Mass Scaling Throughout Step, which completely deactivates the specified mass scaling settings. This was an explanation of the settings related to mass scaling. Now that I have shown you how to apply the necessary settings, let's examine the effects of mass scaling on our model. As I explained, I have two models, which are essentially the same except that mass scaling has been applied to one but not the other. I created jobs for both models, and they have been completed. Now, let's examine the effects of mass scaling on our model. First, I open the Monitor tab for the model without mass scaling, named Job 1, and then open the Monitor tab for the model with mass scaling applied, named Job 2, Mass Scaling. Now, we can compare the two models alongside each other. This is our Job 1, where mass scaling is not applied, and here is Job 2, where mass scaling is applied. One important point is that in stable time increments, we can see that the stable time increment, delta t, was on the order of 5 times 10 to the power of negative 7. However, when mass scaling is applied, it increases to the order of 5e minus 6. As a result, our stable time increment is about 10 times higher, meaning our calculation cost is reduced and the number of increments has decreased. When using mass scaling, the number of increments created in the process is about 94,000. However, without mass scaling, the simulation requires 851,000 increments to complete the model. This was the effect of mass scaling on simulation speed. We go to the visualization module to compare these two models with each other. I will bring these two models to you and compare them. In viewport 1, we have job 1, and in viewport 2, we have job 2. The model on the right is one where we are using mass scaling and the maximum von Mises stress in the sheet we formed is equal to 6.442 times 10 to the power of 1. In the model without mass scaling, this value is 6.603 times 10 to the power of 1. As you can see, these values have a very small difference, which means that our simulation of the process has been performed correctly and the application of mass scaling has not affected our results. This is the deep drawing process that I will show you to illustrate how this process is carried out. I will keep the window on the right, which relates to the model with mass scaling. One important check after applying mass scaling is to ensure that, 
before running your job, you request ALLIE, total internal energy, and ALLKE, total kinetic energy, in the history output of your step. In the visualization module, plot both internal energy and kinetic energy together in a single diagram, as I have done here. At the end of the solution, you should examine the kinetic energy of your model, represented by this small blue curve, in relation to the total internal energy, indicated by the red color, to ensure that the ratio is less than 10%. As you can see here, this ratio is less than 10% which confirms that your simulation is still quasi-static and that you have correctly applied the mass scaling technique. This concludes my explanation of the mass scaling technique. I hope this video was useful for you, and I encourage you to check out my other tutorials as well.